welcome to episode six of Retrieving Reason podcast, Some Things Are Clear to Reason. Welcome back. We took a week off because of this craziness that's going on in the world right now. I had to move all of my classes to online this past week. It's been very busy, uh, but I'm coming to you now from the refurbished Dirt Road studio. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see my background has been snazzed up a little bit. Uh, let's get on with what we're talking about today. In the last episode, we discussed the definition of knowledge and we ended with an attitude of hope with respect to knowing. So we wanted to see, can we know what is the definition of knowledge? And uh, hopefully we can move forward now. We have the uh, TOA definition of knowledge, true account, true opinion with an account, where the account is reasons or uh, providing arguments such that the opposite position is impossible. So we have a method now going forward and it's going to be connected with the use of reason and argument. And uh, today we want to talk about the kinds of things we can expect to know when we talk about the TOA definition. What, what should we be able to know? And uh, we should be able to know what is clear to reason. And so today I'm going to rely on a handout that I inherited from my mentor. And the handout is just a one pager and it's called Some Things Are Clear. And uh, I'm going to read a little bit from that handout. He's got three arguments on this handout, which I really appreciate. Um, the first argument is that some things are clear. Incidentally, uh, Professor Ganganine wrote a book called Philosophical Foundation, uh, a critical analysis of basic belief in 2008. And he begins the book with this line, uh, some things are clear, the basic things are clear, the basic things about God and man and good and evil are clear to reason. And so that, the opening lines, he, he gave an argument for later in this handout. So I'm using the handout and we'll see, is it true? Is it true that some things are clear? So let's think about that first. What does that mean? So um, we have to use the method we talked about. The uh, opposite is impossible. So if we start with some things are clear, the contradiction of some things are clear is nothing is clear or none is clear. So uh, the argument assumes reason, it doesn't prove it, and we haven't really gone into what reason is yet except for it's the laws of thought, but we're using the laws of thought in this argument. Uh, and so contradictions can't both be true and can't both be false. It has to be one or the other according to the law of excluded middle. So let's think about this. The contradiction of some is clear is none is clear. And if none is clear, then no distinction is clear, meaning the distinction between A and non-A, the first distinction we make, is not clear. Being and non-being, that distinction's not clear. True and false is not clear. Good and evil is not clear. So we couldn't even make any distinction if nothing is clear. And if no distinction is clear, then we don't have any meaning. We lose meaning. And if there's no meaning, then there's no thinking, because when we think, that's the first thing we, we come upon, concepts, grasp, meaning. So if there's no thinking, there's no talking, because words express concepts. And if there's no thinking and talking, then we're in a condition of nihilism, meaninglessness. And if we are concerned for consistency, if we have integrity, then there's no possibility for dialogue and discussion ends. And many people do end the discussion at this point. But we don't have to go that way. Nihilism is not existentially possible. It's not livable. We can't live consistently without thinking and talking. Have you ever tried it? Have you ever tried to stop thinking or talking? Either way, uh, if we uh, stop thinking and talking, then uh, we, we cease being human, I think. Um, but we can't cease being human. So rather than that, we are more likely lacking integrity and are hypocritical. If we say nothing is clear, we're using words to say it. Um, so since we do make distinctions and we do think and talk, it's uh, clear that some things are clear. Since we do think and talk, 
it's clear that some things are clear. And now some people are going to say, well, I don't know what, what it means clear. I don't know what clear means. Um, that's sort of self-referentially absurd too, because you're asking for clarification about what is clear. So it's assuming the thing you're asking to be proven. So, uh, we do ask for clarification. So we know what clear means. It means readily knowable or easily knowable. Now, uh, so this is the argument that uh, some things are clear. The opposite would lead to nihilism, okay? So nothing is clear is absurd. So some things are clear, but what are the things that are clear? So the next thing is to consider the basic things are clear. So remember we're using this presuppositional approach where we start with what is more basic and we go to what is less basic after that. So um, if anything is clear, then it's going to be that the basic things are clear. So thinking is presuppositional. We think of the less basic in light of the more basic. So more basic first, then less basic. And if we agree on the more basic, we will agree on the less basic. This is a really hopeful approach for us. So if we can seek agreement and find agreement on the more basic things, then the less basic things should be uh, should fall in line for agreement as well. But if we don't agree on the more basic things, then we can't agree on the less basic things. So uh, here are some examples. We think of meaning in light of reason. Reason is that tool by which we grasp, understand meaning. Uh, we understand truth in light of meaning. Meaning is more basic than truth. Meaning comes first, then truth. Uh, our basic beliefs are prior to the interpretation of our experience. And in an argument, premises are logically prior to com conclusions of an argument. And in the realm of uh, metaphysics, uh, infinite and eternal is logically prior to finite and temporal. And so we do have this concept of what is more basic and less basic. Uh, general revelation is prior to special revelation in the realm of theism. So here's an implication. If it's not the case that the more basic, is, more basic is clear, then it's not the case that the less basic is clear. If the more basic and the less basic are not clear, then nothing is clear. But we already talked about some things are clear. It's not the case that nothing is clear because we just argued that some things are clear. Therefore, the basic things are clear. So if anything is clear, the basic things are clear. And now we have to figure out, well, what are the basic things about? What are these things that are clear? So now we get to the next argument. And this is exciting because this is the stuff of philosophy. This is the stuff we want to talk about, but we don't talk about because either we think we can't know about these things or... We're too modern for these things. We've moved beyond these things. Or uh, nobody can, can really find an answer in the history of philosophy. We have other people's attempts, but we never arrive at an answer. So we want to see, see if we can make progress in this discussion. I think we can. I think we should try. So let's look at the next uh, piece. The basic things are about God and man and good and evil. Now, God and man is... Uh, is there a God or not? It's clear that there either is a God or there isn't a God. And human nature. It's either clear what a human being is or it's not clear what a human being is. And good, if we could know what a human is, we could know what's good for a human. And if we could know what's good for a human, we could know what's evil for a human. So these are the things that should be clear reason. And these are the things of metaphysics and ethics. So the basic things are about... What is infinite and eternal? Why is that? Because uh, our most basic beliefs are about the most basic concept. And the most basic concept is that of existence. And existence is of two kinds, always or eternal and not always, temporal. So the basic things are about what is infinite and eternal. So if something is eternal, it's also infinite. Okay, those are the qualities that... Uh, an infinite being would an eternal being would possess infinite qualities and uh, the infinite and the eternal are questions about God and it's either clear that God exists or God does not exist right that's an either or it's a 
uh, the law of excluded middle would tell us that either God exists or God does not exist. So the basic things are about God. Okay, our most basic concept, existence, the most basic way of thinking about existence, infinite and eternal, and the infinite eternal is about God. And either God does exist or God does not exist. So the basic things are about God. And if some things are clear about God, then some things are clear about human nature or man as well. And if some things are clear about human nature, then what would be clear is what is good and what is not good or evil for human nature, because good and evil are based on the nature of a being. So if we can understand what human nature is, we can understand what is good and what is evil for human nature. And so that gets us to uh, metaphysics. The things of metaphysics should be clear and the things of ethics, good and evil, should be clear. Now, if they're clear, then they're clear to reason. So that's how we get that the basic things about God and man and good and evil are clear to reason, because reason is that by which we understand these things. So uh, here is a little pathway. So we've, re we've uh, talked about a method for knowing things through reason. And now we're talking about the things that we can know through reason, the basic things that are clear to reason. Now, if we could know the answer to the question, does God exist or not, we can answer a lot of other things about our world and its origins and its destiny. And if we could answer the question about what is a human being, we could answer a lot of other things too about what is a human, what is good for humans, what is evil for humans, how should I live my life? And the less basic things could also be answered, like um, who should I vote for? Who should I marry? Uh, what profession should I be involved in? What about work? What is the good of work? So we can answer a lot of questions if we can get to what is clear to reason. All right, so what we need to do now is talk about the implications for denying what is clear. So some people will want to say, uh, no, I object. I don't believe it, anything is clear to reason. Uh, this is maybe the heart of skepticism, that nothing's clear to reason, or fideism, which says nothing's clear to reason, but we have to believe anyway or we lose meaning. So to deny that uh, some things are clear would be to say that we can't have knowledge. And uh, there are two options for us at this point. We need to have integrity. So there are implications uh, of for integrity with this concept of clarity. So if, uh, if some things are clear, then we should know them because we're rational beings. If we had integrity, we would know them. And if we knew them, then we'd be able to show it to others. We'd be able to demonstrate our understanding to others. Um, but if we can't show what is clear, that's evidence that we don't really know. Now, that's not, it's bad, but it's not completely devastating. Here's why. If we don't know what is clear to reason, but we want to know, well, then we should repent and seek to know. Repent is change your course, change your way, change your mind. So let's say you're going down this path of not knowing, but you want to know. Well, then you should start to seek to know. And seeking we've talked about in previous episodes. It's an activity by which you actively pursue. And maybe you have to go find someone else to ask you, to ask them to teach you. So... Um, if we don't know, but we want to know, we should repent and we should seek. The alternative, though, is to not seek and not understand. And then we have to give an account for our failure to understand. And uh, it's without excuse for failing to know what is clear. Um, and often this will lead down the road to nihilism. Why? Because if we don't seek, we don't understand, we don't do what is right, and our lives start to become less and less meaningful, because we're rational beings, we need meaning. So we're meaning-pursuing beings, 
But if we don't find meaning, then uh, things get boring, we empty them of meaning, and we pursue things that we think will give us meaning, but they don't. We go into excess, and then we feel guilty because we've wasted our time, our effort, our lives. And uh, maybe we blame others. We justify ourselves and we blame others. And so this is a kind of death, a spiritual death, and uh, we don't, we don't uh, want that. So we can either repent and seek, or uh, perhaps we should just be silent and say, nothing's clear to reason. What I'm saying right now is meaningless, so I should stop talking and stop thinking. That seems like a hard road to go down for a rational being, though. So we could seek, or we could be silent and go down the path of nihilism. But if we seek, we'll find meaning. So here, here are two options. I just, I just saw these two options. Seek and find meaning, or don't seek and be silent and go into nihilism more and more meaninglessness, which is really a kind of hypocrisy because we can't live that way. So integrity or hypocrisy, seeking and integrity or not seeking and hypocrisy. All right, so here again, we see that there are ethical implications for being a rational being. All right, so what did we talk about today? We talked about what does it mean to say some things are clear, the basic things are clear, and the basic things are about God, human nature, good, and evil. And now that we have, we can have knowledge in place, and we can have knowledge of the basic things, God and man, and good and evil, we should talk more about reason, what it is, and how we use it or misuse it, and how reason is an aspect of human nature. And that's where we're gonna go in the next few episodes. So today, we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you for joining me, and uh, I know these times are kind of strange. Uh, I don't know what the social distancing will do to us. Maybe it will make us want to think more and want to think about how to solve our problems better. So I'm hoping that uh, people get turned on to reason and what we can do with it and how to address some of the problems that we face today. I mean, it's not just practical problems that we face. These are philosophical problems and we need a philosophical solution for them. So that's why I do this podcast. All right, thanks again for joining me. I'll talk to you again soon. Have a great week.